All right. So first things first. Sorry I haven't been around for the last couple of weeks. Believe it or not, there's been no sexism. <laughs> I'm kidding. I actually took some time off to build formidable ramparts around my yard because these idiots in Georgia won't be happy until they get everybody killed. But don't worry about all of the deaths and economic suffering this virus is causing. My arch nemesis, Lori Alexander, already declared it all worthwhile to get mothers back at home parenting their children. And here's her reasoning. She's a terrible bitch. Nowhere near the worst sexism I've seen in the coronavirus news since the last time I saw you, though. That prize might belong to a series of Malaysian posters that reminded women not to be all bitchy during quarantine. For example, one poster told women not to nag their husbands while everybody is stuck at home. It even gave some great examples of things you can do instead of nagging. And those things include gentle humor, girlish giggling, and using a Doraemon-like voice. What does that last one mean? I am so glad you asked, and I promise I am not making this shit up. Doraemon is a robot cat from a Japanese children's cartoon whose voice sounds like Elmo got corrupted by the one ring. Now, after humans saw the posters, the Malaysian Women and Family Development Ministry apologized for them and took them down. Which is a good thing and all, but holy fuck, when you roll the Women Department and the Family Development Department into the same ministry... How the fuck is their finished product supposed to not be sexist? And I know I should keep this segment closer to home with all the social distancing orders in place and all of that, but our final story comes out of Sudan, and it actually contains good news. Well, in the sense that the last one did. It's a story about a terrible sexist thing that a country was doing and isn't doing anymore. Except this one is way worse because this country was chopping girls' clips off. But apparently they won't anymore. Or at least they're going to make some minimal effort to stop it, hopefully. And that's what passes for good news on this segment. But yeah, after the UN estimated 87% of Sudanese women had undergone that irreversible ritual torture, the nation finally looked set to outlaw female genital mutilation and impose a three-year prison term on anyone caught performing the act. Now, of course, this won't end the process overnight, but holy shit, at the very goddamn least, it's finally illegal. And that's as close as we get to warm and fuzzy on twin. Anyway, sorry to leave you so soon after not seeing you for so long, but that's all I've got. So until next time, which will be next week instead of next month this time, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. <laughs>